What's going on, y'all? So here today, what we're going to break down, I'm going to give you 40 different tips, 40 different tips for how you can leverage the podcast medium. All right. And these are going to be tips for people on the far left side who might just be starting their podcast, might have an idea for a podcast, the people further on the right, further experienced to who have a podcast and who might be trying to figure out, do I want guests? Do I need guests? How do I go about it? All of those things. So we're going into that today on Beyond the Ball with Jonathan Jones. All right, let's go and get into it. Beyond the Ball Podcast. How do you know what your audience wants to hear? How do you know? John, I'm just starting my podcast. How do I know what my audience wants to hear? Excellent, excellent question. So first and foremost, you may not know, okay? You may not know, honestly, until you actually just put some episodes out there and then see what the response is, see how people respond, see how they engage. However, you being in your particular area, your particular industry, as you learn new information, you can begin to share and release that information accordingly as well. So this way, by you not knowing what they want to know, you can make sure you let them know, I'm not an expert. I'm learning this information as I share it. And I would love to go on the journey with you. By you sharing that that way, this allows people to be open to sharing more, responding, letting you know what they want to hear, and then ask them. Ask them what they want to hear, and they'll respond and let you know. This is your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a mentor. One thing I always love about Chick-fil-A, they always say, it was my pleasure. It was my pleasure. May I have some extra sauce? Yes, you can, John. It's my pleasure, right? So they have created a dining experience if it's in the drive through if it's in one of the fast lanes, if it's going inside the restaurant. They've created an experience, okay? And I would encourage you to do the same thing for your podcast. What experience are you creating for your listeners? Are you creating the intro music to where when they hear it, they get pumped up? Are you creating different segments to where as they're going through your show, they're looking and listening to hear their favorite segment on your show? Have you created it to where you're the first one bringing breaking news so they feel like they're a part of something special? Have you created a tribe through your show to where they feel like you're only talking to them? I would encourage you to do that. And by you creating an audio experience, now you're going to shut the show down. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. So here's the thing. It's easy not to brag on yourself because the culture doesn't necessarily like that. They consider that as you being cocky sometimes or even arrogant. However, I want you to brag on yourself. I used to be so embarrassed sometimes to say certain accomplishments and accolades that I've had. Man, people need to know what you've done. People need to know your resume just a little bit. So I want you to brag on yourself. And I don't want you just to do it all belligerently and, you know, just come out and be like some people that we see all plastered on the TV and Twitter and everything else. But I want you to brag on yourself intentionally and strategically. If you're seeking to get more coaching clients, then let people know the success you've had with previous clients that you've coached. If you want to get more speaking engagements, let people know what other people have said in response to your engagement. Okay, so brag on yourself a little bit. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. I give you permission. I always come back to it. My first business coach, Kendall Ficklin, he always said, John, water what works. Water what works. And now I finally understand what he was saying. So when you find something that works successfully in your business, do it again, do it again, and then do it again. Too often, we pull our foot off the gas too soon. If we do something and we have success, keep doing that, right? If you're playing basketball and you keep driving to the, to the goal with the right-hand layup and you, you're open every time and you make it every time, don't start pulling up and trying to shoot. Drive to the basket with the right-hand layup. Family, it's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and I want to let you know that we have a free training coming up. You can go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. It's for entrepreneurs, speakers, coaches, and consultants to show you how to start, leverage, and monetize your podcast, all right? So make sure to go to the link down in the show notes, and this has been a Mentor Minute. It's, It's easy to check on everybody else, right? Just like on the airplane, they say, before, if in case of an emergency, make sure to grab your mask and secure it first before you try to help somebody else. I want to talk about self-care for podcasters, right? You need to know that if you've been going at this for so long and you're feeling burnt out, 
You need to take a breather. All right. Shout out to my guy, Coach Ed Jones, the host of the Player Development Pod. He said, John, I need to take a break. Got a son that just came into the world and everything like that. I need to take a break. I said, Ed, don't do that. He said, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to recap my previous episodes. So people who missed episodes, they got time to catch up. I said, that's genius. Take self-care and take what you need so that ultimately you can come back better than you were before. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And this has been a mentor minute. So this is one of my favorite topics. People always ask me, and I spoke about this at PodFest. They said, John, how do I get more guests? How do I get more guests? I say, shoot your shot. Okay, Steph Curry, that thing. Before I go in deep, you're not going to get everybody that you want to get, but you are going to get some of the people that you shoot for. So I say, make a list of people, right? Make a list. I did an Excel spreadsheet, made a list of podcasts that were in my target audience, okay? Then after I made that list, then I began to find those hosts by Instagram and I would send them an audio message. Well, it was a video actually. I sent them a video message. Hey, my name's Jonathan Jones. Love the show that you got going on. I would love to uh, see if you'd be interested to be a guest on my show. Then I take a screenshot and show them that I left a review on their episode. Okay. Then I wait to hear back from them, right? Because when you began to do this and reach out to see about having them as a guest on your show, you create rapport, you create traction, you build a relationship. What is a podcast? What is a podcast? What is a podcast? So ultimately, traditionally, right, a podcast is audio that you can listen to on a, on a MP3 device, on a phone, on a computer, anything like that. That's what a podcast is, okay? Some people now, if you see them pop a video up on YouTube or they have a Facebook Live show, they'll call that a podcast. I disagree, Okay, some people will say that, John, that's a da, 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 that's not a podcast, or that is a podcast. At the end of the day, a podcast is audio at its base level, and it has an RSS feed. And that's what we talked about in a previous episode, because an RSS feed is what holds and what houses all of your episodes and everything like that. So that is what a podcast is, a way for you to inform, educate, and inspire people through audio content. All right? This has been a Mentor Minute. I don't know. I don't know who needs to hear this message today, but don't stress over the numbers. Don't stress over the numbers. John, what? What are you talking about? So many people want to have these high numbers for a podcast, but then you ask them why they don't have a clear reason. So that's why I'm telling you, don't stress out over something that you don't even know what the purpose of them is for just yet. Right. And I say that because you're going to be comparing yourself to Joe or to Jim or to whoever else might be in your industry. But for what? Right. So don't get stressed out of the numbers. Focus on literally impacting one person at a time. Right. When you record your podcast, make it like you're talking to one person, just me and you, just me and you. Because when you begin to benefit that one person, then there's going to be others that are just like that individual that are gaining value, and then your audience will be able to grow over time. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. Shout out to my fans of The Office. That's what she said. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, you don't have to go so long, okay? You don't have to go so long. Oh, man, that's what she said. Okay, I said it wrong, out of order, whatever. But the moral of the story is this. The moral of the story is this. People are going on to do these three hour, two hour, one hour, 45 minute long podcasts. And are you even sure if people are listening to them? Like, are people staying on for the entirety of your show? Yes, we know the Joe Rogans of the world with three hour long podcasts, people are staying and listening the whole time because he's bringing on people that you want to hear from, okay? But some of us, we might not have built the trust enough to have a three hour, four hour long podcast. So just consider, you don't have to go so long, all right? It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. If you want to learn more about podcasting, be sure to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. We've got a free training, and it's just for you. You don't need a co-host. You don't need a co-host. You don't need a co-host. I don't know who this is for, but you don't need a co-host. I promise you. I promise you. So look, too often we allow a co-host to be a crutch for us because we don't feel confident enough to go all in solo dolo and do our own thing. We allow a guest to be a crutch because now when we have a guest, we just ask them questions and then they just give us answers. But at the end of the day, you don't need that. 
just trust who you are, trust your experience, trust your expertise, and trust your ability to carry a show. That's it. That's all I got for today. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. If you want to learn more about holding your own show and being the leader of your own show, is the podcast industry really saturated? I hear it all the time and I love when I hear it. So look, here's the thing. There's about 5 million podcasts reported on Spotify, about 4 million reported on the podcast index. And the fact of the matter is there's a billion users on Facebook. There's a billion users on Instagram. I believe there might be a billion on TikTok as well. Like the numbers are just going up and up and up. So podcasting is not saturated because the majority of people quit before they even have done six episodes. So therefore, the barrier for entry is very low, but the withstanding power, that's also low as well. Okay. So I'd encourage you to get started with a podcast and I want to help you get started with a podcast. So go to getpaywithpodcasting.com. I have a training just for you. It's geared toward entrepreneurs, coaches, speakers, and consultants. So sign up for the training. I look forward to seeing you there. And we're going to get your podcast going and we're going to turn you into an authority. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. How do I get more listeners to my show? Ah, it's your podcast mentor and we're diving in. You tell more people about your show. Okay, here's a few ways. First way, you tell everybody you know about your show. You make sure that everybody you know knows you have a podcast. That's number one. Number two, you actually put the link to your show in your bio on Instagram, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, wherever, okay? Number three, you share clips of your podcast. You share like the jarring clips, the one where like leave people cliffhanging like, wait, what did you just say? What did she just say? What did he just say? All right, that those right there. And then the other part is you actually promote it, okay? So you put some time, you put some energy, you put some graphics, you put some money behind the overall promotion of the show. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. So here's the thing. There's never a perfect podcast topic, but if you wanted a cheat code to finding out what's a great topic that people want to hear you talk about, just go to this website right here, answerthepublic.com. Okay, answerthepublic.com. That website, you type in a certain word or phrase, and that website is going to provide you with hundreds of options of what you could talk about because they're going to bounce back questions that people have been asking about this particular topic or word that you typed in. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, man. Go to, go to answerthepublic.com to get some topics, but if you're serious about podcasting, Go to the other link, getpaidwithpodcasting.com, because I want to teach you, I want to show you, and I want to help you become an authority with your brand and take you to the next level. John, John, I'm struggling to try to pick the right social media platform. I'm not sure which platform is right for me. So look, I want you to think about it like this. I want you to use the platform that you've got the most traction with thus far. In addition to that, I want you to use the platform that you can be consistent with, okay? Because for some of us, it's easy to hop on, put a tweet out, whatever it might be, put out an audio clip on Twitter, whatever it might be. But for some of us, Instagram is easier. And then for others, LinkedIn might be easier because we like to write long form content, okay? So just consider what platform works best for you. Double down on that. And then after you get a good habit and after you get some good traction, then begin to branch out to multiple platforms. All right. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And this has been a mentor minute. Okay. Can I be, can I be honest? Like, can I just be, can I shoot you straight? Okay. So look, here, here's the thing. Okay. Stop, stop sending the mass DMs. Okay. Stop sending people the links to your episode. Stop sending people just random messages and tagging people. Hey, listen to my podcast. Listen to this episode. Listen to that episode. If the people have an expressed interest in the podcast or in the episode topic, then it's okay to include them in a message here or there. It's even okay to include them in a message if you're asking them, what's their thought? Like, hey, what's your thought on this? But do not, do not, do not send a mass DM that's just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, because that's the fastest way for people to block you and for people never to want to hear about your podcast ever again. That's all I got. This is a Mentor Minute, your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones.
what's one of the best ways to get more traction out the gate? One of the best ways to get more traction out the gate, man, people have been screaming left and right, TikTok, left and right, TikTok, left and right, TikTok. I would say short form content, okay? And what is short form content? Short form content is when we talk about Instagram with the reels, we talk about TikTok, and then we also talk about YouTube shorts, okay? So creating short form content, talking about either your episode or just talking about the content that you typically talk about and then linking people back to your podcast, that's a great way to get some traction, all right? It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. I want to stop for a second and I want to let you know that you're so dope, okay? You're really dope and you haven't taken time to give yourself enough credit for you being just dope, okay? So with you being dope and you do dope things, I want you now to tell people how dope you are. Tell people the history that you've had. Like for me, when I go back and think and people ask, well, John, how did you start speaking and how'd you do this and how'd you do that? Well, sometimes I forget I was in Toastmasters. Then after Toastmasters, then I hired a speaking coach, business coach. Then after that, I've also trained myself. And then I've put in years and years and reps and reps. And I've competed in Toastmasters competitions. I've won trophies. I've done two TEDx talks. Like brag on yourself a little bit because people can't forget how dope you are, especially when it comes to you positioning your business. And if you're a speaker, coach, or consultant, and you want to learn how podcasts can help you elevate your business, I want you to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. Somebody once asked me before, John, what's the best way to edit a podcast? And I said, don't. <laughs> so look, everybody has their own philosophies. Everybody has their own systems. Everybody has their own way of doing things. I don't necessarily like editing my podcast. So if I don't have an editor, then I won't edit it. Okay. I'll put the intro on it. I'll put the outro on it, wrap it up, call it a day because it is what it is. Period. It's your podcast mentor, and this has been a Mentor Minute. If you're a speaker, coach, or consultant, and you want to learn more about starting a podcast and ultimately maximizing your brand authority, then go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com because I want to show you how. All right. What are the cons of having a co hosted podcast? What are the cons, right? Because it seems like a benefit you having, you know, somebody there to talk with, chat with. The cons of a co hosted podcast are, you're always making sure that you and that person are on the same schedule, okay? Something else that's a con of having a co-hosted podcast. You need to make sure that this person isn't trying to isn't trying to bully the episode, right? So they're not trying to have an alternative agenda and trying to go against what you're saying or they're trying to solely pitch themselves, their product, whatever it might be. So this is some of the downsides of having a co-hosted podcast in addition to like you may need to be in the same place if you're not in the same place then you may need to consider investing in some sort of software to where you both can be on camera at the same time this is some of the cons of having a co-hosted podcast it's your podcast mentor jonathan jones and this has been a mentor minute what are the pros of having a co-hosted podcast so in terms of the pros uh, one of the pros for sure is you having somebody that you can continue to have dialogue with right? Somebody that you have your opinion, they have their opinion. So now the audience can determine whose side they're on with this topic or that topic, which is always great. Okay. Even the fact of having a co-hosted podcast, you're not doing the heavy lifting all alone, right? You get half the guts, you get half the glory because it's split. The duty is split. And then with the co-hosted show, you can edit some of the episodes. They can edit some of the episodes. You can promote some of the episodes. They can take on promotion of the episodes. So that's benefits of having a co-hosted podcast. In addition to showing up with somebody, it's a different level of accountability, right? It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. So here's the thing. Too often, we've been too kind. Sometimes... We don't share our own opinion. We don't share what we feel. We don't share what we believe to be true. Share your opinion, all right? And I say that because the people who are meant to follow you and the people who are meant to be in your quote unquote tribe, they're going to come together based on you sharing your opinion, okay? I, I believe in us sharing our opinion. I don't believe in hateful speech or anything like that. But in terms of your own philosophy, about maybe why you should 
uh, start your own business or why you should have a nonprofit, I'm here for it. Share your opinion because it's going to be different than somebody else's. And I feel it's necessary. It's been your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a mentor minute. What are the benefits of having a solo podcast? Solo podcast is, shoot, you will be the authority for that topic if you continue time and time and time after time. Okay, that's one. That's the biggest benefit. The other benefit is you can talk about what you want to talk about. You lay it out like it's open season for you to talk about whatever you desire. And then you can bring on whoever you want to bring on. If you decide you want to have guests, if you get an offer for a sponsorship, you can sign the deal. You don't have to do checks and balances with anybody because it's just you. It's your show. You can change the name if you want to change the name. You can keep the name if you want to keep the name. But at the end of the day, all the decisions only go through you and they don't have to go through anybody else in terms of your show. All right. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And if you want to learn more about podcasting and you're a speaker, coach, or consultant, go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. Vet your guest. Vet your guest. Vet your guest. Okay. The reason I'm saying that and I'm double down on saying it is because I don't want you to be in a spot to where you bring somebody on your show and they haven't done what they've said they've done. Or even worse, them to offer a product on your platform, people in your audience buy it, and then they don't get the success that the person talked about from it, all because we didn't do our due diligence in vetting our guests. So make sure that if people want to be a guest, make them fill out a form. Uh, take time and ask them who else's show have they been on. Take time and listen to another interview. Look them up. It is a little bit of work, but I promise you it's worth it when we talk about your trust and your credibility being on the line. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and I want to challenge you on something. Yes. So ever so often, you know, we, we watch TV and we see um, athletes, entertainers, everything like that get interviewed after the game. And an interview, I feel, is somebody that has prepped up questions and then after the prepped up question, they ask, the people answer, they ask, the people answer. But let's not focus on having interviews, but let's focus on having conversations. I've realized some of my best conversations, right, some of my best content has been me having a dialogue with the guests and us having conversations about a topic as opposed to me asking this question. Okay, question number two. Okay, question number three. All right. So I challenge you to not just get caught up on having interviews, but get caught up having conversations. All right. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And this has been a mentor minute since since the start of my podcast journey. Right. The whole the whole shebang a bang through all four shows. I've been very intentional on letting letting you in. Because I want you to know me. I want you to know the mistakes I've made, the pitfalls I've had in life, in business, whatever. I don't care. I want you to know it all, okay? And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to allow your audience to get to know you. And when they begin to get to know you, they'll have a different level of respect for you. And with that respect, then comes trust. And then with that trust, then could come compensation. Maybe, maybe not. It just all depends on the relationship you have with your audience, but allow them inside to where they can get to know you, they get a feel for you, and they see who you really are behind the microphone. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. So check it out. I want you, I want you to make more mistakes. And I'm saying that because this, I tell the people this in my mentorship community all the time. The people in my Get Paid With Podcasting uh, community, I tell them this all the time. I say make more mistakes. Make more mistakes. If you never make a mistake, then you're not going hard enough. And I remember my coach would tell me, John, get in the game, get in the game. I want y'all to make mistakes. And he would say, if you didn't make a mistake, then you weren't hustling. And I'm saying that because as you begin to make the mistakes, you then begin to learn and then you can make the pivot, the switch, the change, the adjustment, whatever needs to be made. Oh man, I didn't charge the battery up on my camera, so my battery died. I didn't plug up the microphone into my laptop. Oh, I need to remember that next time. I'll put that on a checklist. Right. These are things we can begin to put in place. But if we never make the mistake, we'll never learn from it. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a mentor minute. If you want to learn more about podcasting, go to get paid with podcasting dot com.
put a face to every download. What are you saying, John? If you don't know who your audience is, how do you know that your content is going to best cater to them? And how do you know that you're best serving them? How do we put a face to a download? Well, easy. You put some type of form in place to where you can capture name, email address, telephone number, a way that you can contact these individuals. And if you have a way that you can contact these individuals, now you have begun to put a face and a name with a download number. All right. That's all I got for today. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. If you're a speaker, coach, or consultant, and you want to learn more about how to start, how to launch, and how to monetize a podcast, go to getpaywithpodcasting.com and sign up for our free training, and we're going to get you right. So I'll see you in the training. I want you to do this. Okay, so I went to SMU graduate school, and they would always let us know we need to cite our references. That's actually why I got kicked out of SMU, because I didn't cite my references, and I did something that they call plagiarizing. That's not a thing necessarily in podcasting, I don't believe. However, I want you to cite your references. I want you to let people know where you got certain information. If you got an article from Podcast News, make mention of Podcast News. If you got some information from a new book, make mention of the book, okay? We need to give credit where credit is due because that's how we begin to grow in the industry. Because if you make mention of me and you said you got something from me that I shared, I'm going to reshare that post. I'm going to retweet that post. And then now we both get more traction on the content. All right. If you use something that they say, give them credit. Give credit where credit is due. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. And this has been a Mentor Minute. What's going on, family? This is your podcast mentor, and this is a Mentor Minute. So check it out. At the end of the day, anybody can start a podcast. One more time. Anybody can start a podcast. One more time. Anybody can start a podcast, but the question becomes, can you stay consistent? Do you have the willpower to show up every Monday, every Wednesday, every Thursday, every Friday to continue to create and curate content that people want to hear, that people will benefit from, and information that people can grow from by taking the time to tap in and to tune into your podcast to where it makes sense and to where it's relevant. So at the end of the day, you don't need a resume, you don't need a, a degree, you don't need any job experience to start a podcast, but can you continue to stay consistent with it? This is your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a mentor minute. So, so check this out. Check this out. A, a little love offering never hurt nobody. All right. <laughs> I, I grew up in the church, been in the church my whole life. And uh, they have something that, that it's called, uh, they, they have something called an honorarium, right? When somebody comes to speak and typically they'll get paid, you know, whatever amount, but it's, it's like a gift. The amount that's given, it's like a gift because they just want to let the people know that they're appreciated. If there's a podcaster out there that you really appreciate, see how you can send them a little love offering. That love offering could be leaving them a rating on Spotify. It can be writing them a review on Apple. It could be sending something to their buy me a coffee. It could be cash apping them something. I don't know, but give a little love offering to the podcast that you appreciate just so that they know that you appreciate them and they know that they are loved and also thought of. Family Issue Podcast Mentor Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. Just want to let you know this Mentor Minute is brought to you by GetPayWithPodcasting.com, the only training to show you how to start, how to leverage, and how to monetize your podcast platform. Let's get into the content. How does podcast sponsorship work? At the end of the day, sponsors want to get in front of people who are their ideal client and people who want to spend money with them. So now they're in a position to where they will pay you a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, whatever the amount is, if you can help them convert on their target audience. So if you're a sports podcast and maybe there's somebody with a sports product, let's say Gatorade, Gatorade potentially can pay you if you have built up an audience over time to where it would be beneficial for Gatorade to pay you instead of trying to reinvent the wheel in terms of marketing. This has been a Mentor Minute with your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. But John, how do podcasts make money? Excellent question. Excellent question. So it all, it all depends, all right? And this is Jonathan Jones here with a Mentor Minute. It all depends on 
on who you are and what your level of authority is before you roll out the podcast. Why am I saying that? Because some individuals sign deals like Joe Rogan has signed a deal with Spotify for upwards of $100 million. And uh, Alexandra Cooper signed a deal with Spotify. And then we can go on and on because there's podcast networks who provide revenue for individuals who already have a following because they know they're going to recoup that money. For some of us starting off, we may need to consider doing an affiliate promotion or affiliate sales by way of our podcast where we refer people to products that we use and enjoy using. This is your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. Go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com to sign up for my free training. But John, but John, how do I know which is the right microphone for me? But John, they got the they got the sure microphone. And then on top of that, then they have the Zoom. They got the Zoom contraption. And then in addition to that, they got the Samsung. Oh my goodness, the Samsung Q2U. And they have the Audio Technica. John, I don't know which one's the right microphone, my friend. Stop worrying, stop fretting. The short answer is this. The right microphone for you is the one that you can use, okay? When you start out, you don't want to waste money on just buying all these microphones because you don't know which one you're going to like and you don't know which microphone is more most conducive to your style. I say start out with the headphone jack and the earphones if you're starting out recording on your phone, okay? If not, then I want you to take time and do a little bit of research and learn about the microphone before you decide to just dive in and make an investment. I made that mistake, and I don't want you to do it too. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. This is a Mentor Minute. It's brought to you by GetPayWithPodcasting.com, the only training to show leaders, authorities, and thought leaders how you can take your voice and ultimately monetize it to generate more leads and income. Let's get into the topic today. Can podcasts earn money? Yes, podcasts can earn money. Podcasts can earn money by way of... Uh, by way of podcast sponsorship, podcasts can earn money by way of you doing an audio book, by you doing an ebook, by you doing a physical book, by you doing a product, by you creating a coaching program, by you creating a subscription model, by you creating uh, a product that you're selling as an affiliate, by you coaching a community and building revenue of people, leading to paid speaking engagements, leading to you doing live events and charging for those, you doing conferences, and there's many other ways, but that's just a few ways a podcast can help you uh, make money. This has been your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this is a Mentor Minute. One of the biggest challenges that people oftentimes face is trying to figure out how are people going to find my podcast? How are people going to find my podcast? Friend, I want you to think about it like this. When you're in a search for something and you want to buy it and you want to get it quick, where are you going to go? You're going to go to Amazon. So the same applies. When people are in a bind and they want to find some information, they're going to go to Google. All right. So thinking of that, you want to begin to think and understand what terms, what phrases, what keywords can I use to where when people search for this and they're going to frequently search for it, they're going to pull up my podcast. That's why I titled my show the Your Podcast Mentor Show, because I want people to know that I'm a podcast mentor. I guide and direct you to where you need to go in terms of your podcast. Now I want you to think about that in terms of SEO purposes. What do you want people to know you for? It's your podcast mentor, and this has been a Mentor Minute. It's, it's interesting that sometimes we overthink certain areas, right? We overthink um, the answer and even the question that we should be asking. John, can people hear my podcast in their web browser? The short answer is yes, they can, okay? Uh, depending on where you host your podcast, some hosting sites provide a website to where people can search for your podcast and then they can play it right there in that platform. Or then they might provide the Spotify link and or they might provide the Apple link or some of these other links to these players where they can hear your show. However, everybody won't have this benefit because some people may just put their podcast on certain platforms to where it's stifled or it doesn't get full exposure. So you want to make sure you do your research and consider those things. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. Do I have to interview people on my podcast? John, I don't even like people. Do I got to bring them on my podcast? The short answer, no, okay? <laughs> this is your podcast mentor and this is a Mentor Minute. So look, check it out. I want you to think about it like this. 
going back to one of my foundational pro points, what is the purpose of your podcast? Okay. Because you don't necessarily have to have people on your show if you want to be positioned as the authority. Then you just show up and you just kick game and you give content and you solve solutions and answer problems on your show. And that will solidify you as the expert. Yes, some people feel that if you bring, quote unquote, bigger name individuals onto your show, then they're the people and they're the individuals that could help provide more traction. But at the end of the day, you don't have to interview people. It's a choice. But if you want to do the solo show, you can do the solo show. I like to do a mix, a hybrid to where I have some interviews and I do solo as well. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. Friends, 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 what's going on? Uh, this is a Mentor Minute, and I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. My podcast is not popping up on Apple. John, what's the issue? The short issue is, in order for your podcast to pop up on uh, Apple and Spotify, you would need to have one of two things. The first thing would need you would need to be on is a hosting platform, okay? You would need to have a host provider because the host provider provides you an RSS feed which ultimately is a link that you submit to Apple and submit to Spotify, and then you will be on those platforms as well as some others. So if you don't have an RSS feed, then you won't be on those platforms. So make sure you do your research and make sure you identify what host provider would be most beneficial for you and then submit accordingly. This is your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. If you want to sign up for our free training, be sure to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. And this has been a Mentor Minute. How do I get high level guests on my show? Okay, so let me say it like this. I've been able to get dope people like Erica McCall, WNBA, Coach John Mosley from Last Chance U, James Starks from the NFL, Nick Swisher from MLB. You have to take the time and you have to look on their page and you got to ask them. Okay, you can go on Instagram, you can send them a DM, you can go on Instagram and sometimes they have the tab where it says email, shoot a message. Shoot a message, let them know why you would like them to be on your show. Let them know how you feel that they could benefit your show or how they can really add value to the audience. Because the majority of these high level people, they know that they're offering something to you as opposed to you offering something to them. Okay, so just be honest with them. Say, hey, I would love to have you on my show. You will impact a lot of people and really inspire my audience. Would you be down? More than likely, they'll say yes. It's your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones. This has been a Mentor Minute. I don't want people to see my face. I don't want to have to be on camera. Well, the good news is with podcasting, podcast traditionally is audio, right? It's just straight audio, not necessarily video. So you don't have to be a forward-facing brand if you don't want to be, okay? So let me just uh, loosen up that stress right there. However, if you want to really expand, if you want to really, really, really expand, uh, I would suggest you doing video because YouTube is also uh, one of the biggest search engines out there. And if YouTube is one of the biggest search engines, that's video. Even though some people will record the podcast and they just have the audio sound waves to where you don't see a face and you only see those, that's an option as well. But your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, would say, put your face out there. I want to see your face so I can see you, I can recognize you, and I can give you kudos accordingly. This has been your podcast mentor, Jonathan Jones, and this has been a Mentor Minute. Ooh, 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 ooh.